So this way is not trying to make this easy for us by no means when it comes down to who to wish stone for. Now, for the current banners that we have, we have Leon, Gaius, and Hyde. And for the newer banners that's going to be coming, we have the new unit Hypnos, Yunchuan, and Ife. So I figured we're just going to go ahead and dive into what exactly would be a reason as to why you might want to pick up these units and just kind of diving a little bit more into some more logistics. Now, I have to give a disclaimer and I know Hypnos isn't out yet, but I still feel very strongly about talking about this banner because I do think that honestly understanding what potential value is to come and how this can affect your gameplay experience is still going to be really important. So we're going to highlight, obviously, and just quickly go over some of the units that are currently on the banner and then have a little bit more focus and cadence to the units that are going to be upcoming. Now, Leon, right? This is an absolutely amazing Esper, and I don't think that that's an overstatement, and many people can probably agree to that. If you fought her in PvP, you definitely know what I'm talking about, especially if you like using cleave teams. And I think one of the biggest things with her gimmick, with the Dream Bubble, uh, where when it is uh, applied, it's undispellable. Um, incapacitated is going to be the state that she's in. She's immune to controls. All enemies miss up rate is plus 25%. She heals an ally when they take a hit. And I mean, literally anytime they take a hit. Um, and then on top of that, when an ally falls, she then revives and heals them. Um, and that's something that I forgot to mention in my latest video on Leon is that she also is a reviver. And that's something that also gives her a little bit of an edge and some extra utility to really making her extremely powerful and potent as a support. Now, the other running wall that we're going to honestly be presented with is also in that same exact picture we also have leon being shown not only as an esper on the team but it looks like she's actually the lead for that team and the thing is is that does that mean that she's the only esper that you can utilize to be able to do that newer content i don't think that that's going to be the case but what it does emphasize is that she is going to have a slot so i feel like with leon one of the best things that you can do if you have the reasonable amount of wish stones to make it happen i would say one copy should suffice but I definitely would say, let's go ahead and take a look at our other options before you decide to pull the trigger. Gaius, the king himself. Now, I feel like this is going to be an esper for a lot of people that's going to be relatively hard to skip, especially if you don't have your first copy of him yet. Now, when we're looking at Gaius's gimmick, it's really going to be coming from his thunderstorm and really being able to enter in between his god king mode and his normal mode. Now, in the god king mode, uh, he is the king of gods and is also undispellable, so it changes all his ability effects and increases his crit rate by 100% and he deals bonus damage upon attacking. He gains shield in his state and he can also uh, potentially inflict seer as well. Now the thing about this that's really really broken is the fact that one he gives himself 100% crit rate so you literally can build this dude with zero crit rate and slap a whole bunch of crit damage on him and you don't have to worry. Now as you invest in him you get more resos things of that nature he's going to be able to give your party accuracy at R2 and as well as crit rate. Now when he goes into to his normal mode, uh, he's also going to be able to give himself 100% accuracy, which is going to allow him to be able to land his debuffs. Now, like I said, when you're looking at obviously the other gimmicks and or other abilities he has, yes, he can multi-hit, he can AOE, he is absolutely amazing overall. Now, I will say this is a unit that I usually feel like you have to understand there is a very, very gear inclined uh i would say requirement for him to be able to work the way that you truly want him to work especially if you're trying to do things like use him for chronos especially for wave clearing because that's really one of the biggest jobs he has in that piece of content and i see so often that people are trying to use him but they don't really understand that he has to be at a certain point to be able to do that now outside of that content he is going to be useful in our trial content a lot of leaderboard stuff desolate lands you can use him in cube miracle or even tower climbing i mean he has a good amount of content that you're going to be able to use them and even pvp he is on cleave comps so you're gonna run across especially where i'm at for the love of freaking god tever gaius cleaves as far as the team's dps so you really are going to be getting a lot out of him and i feel like again he kind of falls into the same umbrella with leon the only difference is, is that he's a dps and she's a support so depending on the two whichever one you're missing might honestly be a little bit more present at that point so that's going to be ultimately what I kind of think with Gaius. But we still got one more to talk about on this banner. Now we have Hyde. Now I will say out of the trio, Hyde probably is one of the easier ones to say you can skip and honestly do it 
without really thinking about it too much. I feel like for what it's worth, for what he's offering, uh, it's really going to be coming from his passive, uh, where he's able to not receive buffs or debuffs, uh, and the damage he takes is minus 10%, and when he receives a buff or a debuff, he gains a Breath of the Deep stack, and the Breath of the Deep is a undispellable buff that grants him 5% attack per stack and 3% damage reduction per 10 stacks, and this stacks up to 50 stacks. Uh, and as you get rezos, he can carry this over, and he just really just becomes a all-in esper. And what do I mean by that? That means skill-ups. That means you need to have some rezos into him. And an absolutely insane and up-to-par build for him to really be built properly as a DPS. Now, if you did decide to already pull the trigger or you do have him, don't think that you can't use them at all. You can build them to be a little bit more tankier for sl some slower comps, but just keep in mind that he's not going to be at his full potential as far as him being a fighter DPS. Um, and I definitely will say for most players, he's gonna be a lot harder to build if you wanna use him properly. So I think that skipping hide is an absolutely okay thing to do. But let's go ahead and let's talk about the newest and these other two espers that are going to be on the Wishstone banner. Even though Hypnos isn't in the game, there are a lot of supporting factors as to why she's going to be relevant in at least this new Ritual Miracle boss, Andres, and I still firmly believe she is going to be very relevant in PvP. Now, with that, it is under this section in the new features for the Ritual Miracle for the Andres boss fight, where it says Andres' first ability, which is Panic Attack, it reduces the target's AP. The second ability, which is Spectral Companions, calls in all followers for a powerful AP AOE assist attack, and if there are no surviving followers, summons new ones at the cost of Andres' uh, uh, HP. And the third ability, which is Bone Piercing Thorns, inflicts gangrene uh, on all enemies and reducing the target's healing received. The passive ability is Eternal Pain, and allies become immune to AP down effects. Now, if they were immune to anything else it would have stated that within any of this description so no they are not immune and we're talking about the companions by the way uh they're not immune to poison they're not immune to sleep right uh and that's going to obviously be very very apparent because this is very similar to what we actually fought in the void messenger right uh if you did that you know <laughs> for everything that she has it's a lot of debuffing right and this is going to really coincide with the new gear set that's going to be coming which is the calamity set uh, which i do firmly believe is going to be very very powerful for a lot of our debuffers but i think that this is definitely a set that's probably going to be one of her best in slots if not her best in slot so with that She's going to be able to deal damage to an enemy based off her attack and defense, and she's able to increase debuff durations on enemies uh, for one turn. Uh, and then she's also then able to inflict sleep. Now, keep in mind, these are things before she gets her rezo. And then going into her second ability, which is Delirium, you deal damage to all enemies based on Hilda's attack and defense, inflicts speed down, inflicts two poison effects for two turns, and then after Ascension, she can further inflict sleep for a turn, and then extend poison plus one turn. And this is something that's going to be very lucrative when you're talking about those companions because it's going to be four of them that you have to deal with so being able to have not only an aoe spread of poison which is damage right and it's hp based damage then you're also going to have that sleep on top of that that's going to prevent them from actually going and getting a turn so when they get their turn it's going to dissipate the sleep but it's also going to activate or dissipate the poison right and that's something that's going to be very important when we start talking about one of the next units we're going to get into but Going into her third ability, which is Dream Interrupted, she's able to gain the deep sleep for two turns, deals damage to all enemies based on Hilda's attack and defense, inflicts defense down, and two poison effects for two turns. If the defense uh, of the enemy is below Hilda, she inflicts an additional two stacks of poison on the enemy for two turns. And then her passive, which is Hilda's base defense, scales with her accuracy, so Hilda won't miss when inflicting debuffs on targets whose accuracy is not above hers. And then with deep sleep, it inflicts sleep for one turn and poison for two turns at the start of any enemy's turn now the thing about this is that again this is allowing you to have a much tankier build on her now like i said i will have more content getting a little bit more in depth with her build um and all that jazz but i will say that she is honestly already showing a lot of promise for what she's going to be bringing to the table and like i said when we're looking at this newer content she's going to be relevant it's just very obvious it's very very obvious that she's going to be relevant to that and i think that as it scales being able to do 
all these different AOE abilities is not only hitting the companions, but it's also going to be applying to the boss. Now, I highly doubt that you can actually sleep the boss, but I'm almost certain your poisons are going to be stacking, which again is going to equate to HP percent damage. And then as long as you're killing these companions, it's going to be forcing Andres to be removing or taking or consuming its own HP value to be able to make use of summoning more companions, which is only going to help you in the duration of the fight. So I feel like overall for what Hypnos is bringing to the table, it is going to be an extremely invaluable kit. Uh, but is it worth going for right so let's actually talk about the next unit yun chuan now this is the homie okay i've not been able to talk about yun chuan in quite some time and usually when i do it's usually an emphasis of do you have him r0 or are you about to have him r2 because it really does make a huge difference in what this unit is able to do now the biggest thing to his gimmick is going to be his passive which is the whistling stance uh and critical hits inflict something called the third eye seal where the third eye seal uh, will inflict uh miss rate um plus 15 percent and then he's also able to inflict seer with this ability now when enemies with the third eye seal are attacked summon screamer yun chuan's dog to launch a assist attack and it triggers one time per turn now screamer's damage is 20 percent of attack and ignores defense he can still buff from the target and like i mentioned uh, inflict seer as well now the thing about yun chuan is that when you actually take him to r2 r2 is going to be one of the biggest dps openings for probably any character in the entire game now this condition for his whistling stance uh the condition of the summoning screamer to assist change from when enemies with third eye still are attacked by yuntron to when they are attacked by anyone that opens up so much damage potential for my boy okay now with that there's also another reason as to why yuntron would be kind of OP and really is OP on this banner because not only is his third eye sale triggered by bleed procs, right? So when a bleed dissipates and it explodes or goes off, that also procs and assists from him. But now poisons also will inflict and also cause the third eye sale proc for the assists to work. Okay. Now the thing about this, that's kind of weird is it didn't work before but now it does. So with that being the case, this is actually one of the reasons why I feel like this banner is really OP because if you're really close to getting Yunchuan to R2, you're going to be seeing an amazing amount of DPS output coming from him, especially on these debuff based teams where there are things like bleeds, poisons, etc. right? So this is something that again, I don't think a lot of people even realize, but yes, he is able to now be procable or assist off of bleed procs or sorry poison procs which ends up being a absolutely huge thing when you're talking about that hp percent damage and then being followed up with just pure damage and ignoring defense damage at that so very very good unit but i will say it is going to be one of those dilemmas where you're kind of stuck between if you don't have them close to r2 is it really worth picking them up versus if you are at there and you're at r1 for example getting that one copy can really honestly completely change a lot on your account even when you're looking at pieces of content like fafnir uh, and even just other competitive aspects of the game when you're doing other portions of pve content um, i mean cube i mean tower content a lot of different things open up for him when he's at r2 so that's just kind of food for thought but we got one more esper one that i really will say hasn't really gotten much attention that we still have to talk about <laughs> lastly we have ife right now ife is probably one of the espers that had one of the shortest poison reigns ever right it was like poison was a thing and then it just wasn't but now it's seeming like poison is going to have a really 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 good time and it's not just the fact that she can poison but there's also something else that she can do that's going to be extremely good for shade mother right now the thing is is that when we're looking at her s1 she is able to attack one enemy damage is 60 percent of attack she inflicts poison for two turns and if the enemy is debuffed she launches a pursuit attack with tail whip and it triggers one time per turn now if you did not catch any of the pictures or any of the things that were shown in the patch preview for shade mother there was two espers that they showed in particular and they both have something that honestly is going to be huge for the gimmick that she has in her s1 it was brewster and ophelia ophelia is a pursuit based unit and brewster is an assist unit now this is also going to be emphasizing yun chuan as well because he falls under that bracket of assist whereas with 
ife, she's going to fall under that pursuit bracket. So these are two espers, which again, are also going to be falling into those reciprocating uh, elements, which was wind for Ophelia and infernal for Brewster. Ife is infernal and Yun Chuan is wind. I don't know if that's just a coincidence, but it looks like they are going to be able to fulfill and potentially be slotted in as units that can work in that exact content as well. Now, outside of the fact that she can also seem to be used in Andres as well, she is going to have that value for being one of those follow up espers. Now, the thing is, too, is that in her S2, she is able to inflict speed down and she's also able to stun and this is an aoe now uh also the s3 she's able to inflict poison attack down for three turns now that's obviously with rezo so just kind of you know take the lower <laughs> increment there which i think is two uh and then if enemies are inflicted with poison she then is able to still 5% AP. Now, the only thing with this is that when we were looking at Andres, he has his allies immune to uh, AP manipulation, I think, right? So that's one part of her gimmick that's probably not going to work there. But as far as inflicting the attack down and the poison, she is going to be bringing a lot of value in that regard. If they is really looking quite promising pushing forward now that there's seeming to be some content opening up for these units to be more useful. So what exactly is the final verdict? Should you be picking from this first banner or should you be picking from this upcoming banner? And I think a lot of this is going to be very relevant to one, whether or not you are missing a support or DPS when we're looking at this first banner. Leon and both guys are pretty promising and I feel like either one of those would be an amazing option to pick up if you are lacking one of the two right and i think that you know that's just on a general standpoint now when we're looking at the second banner i think it goes to say that this is going to be a banner pretty relevant to the newer content that's going to be coming up and it's very obvious and i think that really the dilemma that a lot of players are going to have with picking up things on this banner is if it makes sense for where your account currently is to snag some of these units because keep in mind you always want to make sure you're grabbing units that's going to currently help you progress and not necessarily just units that are going to be helping you in the future because who knows how long that future might be right but i will say this is going to be an excellent banner to pick up some units that are definitely going to be relevant to the new metrics and metas that are going to be presented when we're talking about poison sleep and even with this whole pursuit and assisting right because it's not just necessarily these effects but you have to think about other units that are able to do these things and whether or not you already have roles that are going to suffice right so again when we're talking about end all be all is this banner going to be the end all be all and you won't have any other options outside of these absolutely not but are these going to be some of probably the better slotted units doing these specific things probably and i think that if you care more about the meta and really honestly what is to come as far as the evolution of the future of where the game's direction is going this is probably going to be a better banner for you to pick up on now with that should you be picking hypnos Yutron or Ife, really, honestly, that one is going to be kind of up to your own discretion. I think when you're looking at Ife or you're looking at, you know, Hypnos, I mean, to be fair, Hypnos seems to be the more superior poisoner. But then again, when you're also looking at what content you might need to be fulfilling, I think that, again, if they might come in second in that regard. But Yunchuan, if you are able to get him to R2, it's going to be pretty amazing. So, that's pretty much going to be my entire take there. Either, generally speaking, pick up Gaius or Leon if you're missing that HP or base support, I should say, or DPS, and or go for the newer unit if you're looking forward to building some comps and some things for this newer content that's going to be coming out. So that's going to be my spiel. I hope that this video was able to help you guys and give you a little bit more of a better understanding and idea of what really you're weighing when you're making a decision. So that's going to be that, guys. Everyone, stay blessed. <laughs> and yeah, stay charged up.